what is Astar if you have to explain it to your mother? If I explain Astar to my mother, the core underlying technology of the future internet. Soto Watanabe, a 28-year-old entrepreneur and founder of Asta, is making waves as the leader of Japan's number one crypto project. Valued at $1.5 billion, Asta is set to drive mass adoption of Web3 globally. Our target is not DeFi user, not NFT user. Our main target is the ordinary people who are working outside right now. This population is much more than the first one. How we deliver blockchain to them is to work with really big companies such as Sony. A lot of the people are using internet today, right? But they don't know TCP IP, they don't know HTTP. Similarly, a lot of the people are going to use Asta. That's why our token economics works. But they don't need to understand how it works. Asta is 1.5 billion dollar network, and my co-founder still sleeping on a mattress. <laughs> In a room where there is just a mattress on the floor, yeah, mattress. no bed. Even executive gathered, but no one complained because we have a similar mindset, culture, and so on. That's the pure entrepreneur mindset, which is even yeah. if you make a lot of money, why why would you overspend if it's not needed? We started our project from the University of Tokyo. I donated roughly 100k or something to University of Tokyo along with Toyota and other companies. What's the most important value that you learned from the Japanese culture that you will keep with you forever? I think Japanese people does not believe Uh, thank okay. you very much for the coffee. Cheers. 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 Good, good to see Cheers. you. Good to have you here. Good to man. see you. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, Japan used to be number one in terms of the economic size 30 years ago, 40 years ago. And uh, after that, our economy has been very stable. Mm. And I'm 28 right now. So our country is not growing since I was born. Mm. You know, then a lot of the legend has been already passed away, such as founder of Sony, founder of Toyota, and so on. They have already, you know, dead. And currently, we don't have enough role model who can mm. play, uh, uh, who can be a global leader. And then I think we are the last generation to make a global company, I think, in terms of the, the you know, country's economic size, in terms of the uh, narrative, trends, and so on. So in terms of the hardware, um, a lot of the technology has been invented in the US, such as even car, transistor, and so on, semiconductor, and so on. And we, Asian, imported a lot from the technology from US and the UK, and then we commercialized it, and we make it compact, smaller, and then export. And now you can see uh, a lot of the Sony products, um, Toyota products across the globe. And now, you know, in terms of the semiconductor indus industry, uh, TSMC from Taiwan and uh, Samsung from Korea, uh, really strong. And when it comes to software, it is also led by the US, mm -hmm. more specifically Silicon Valley, such as the Google, Facebook, and so on. And but uh, in terms of Web3, probably this is the first opportunity for Asia to take the lead. Because in terms of the regulation, um, mm -hmm. US is not the, the government does not have a positive. It's controversial, but uh, does not have positive mindset. But when it comes to Japan, we use it to be number one, but we are losing right now. We completely miss Web2. We don't Absolutely. have a global Web2 company in Japan. And Do you know Web3 why? Comes in. Um, because it's kind of dilemma of the innovators, right? Because we are we used to win, and then probably uh, a lot of the Japanese company are satisfied with the status quo. And then they did not invest in the next technology. In terms of the 30 years ago, it was the internet. Mm -hmm. But now they understand that the reason why we lost and Web3 is coming. It does not need to be Web3. It can be quantum computing. It can be, uh, you know, um, um, AI. It can be fusion, nuclear fusion, and so on. But uh, Web3 is definitely one of the biggest opportunities Japan can take. And now we are backed by Sony. 
and uh, some of the angel investors. In um, January, we announced that we also raised from raise capital fund from Samsung and also UOB. So we are now backed by Asia, and I would like to make a global product from here to US in 2024. So you're basically surfing on this trend that you have this kind of older, more legacy company that are huge mm -hmm. in Asia that realize that they might not be the ones or they're probably not going to be the ones who are building the future, mm -hmm. but they can back up yeah. the ones who are building the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we are strategically doing this. The one of the reason is crypto is great. Uh, Web3 is great. But um, right now, only geek people, I mean, tech people Com use Web3. Completely. Right? <laughs> and probably in terms of the percentage, it's less than 2 or 3% of the human being. And in internet, it used to be like this. Only tech guys create a server in, your, in, in their house. And then make light, you know, you know, uh, a lot of the programming codes mm -hmm. and publish web page. But, but now, thanks to uh, a lot of the company, general people, like, you know, my mother, you know, my grandfather, and, you know, only a child are using internet mm -hmm. without knowing the backend of the internet and what's happening over there. They don't know, but they're using it because it is beneficial and the UI UX is really great. But when it comes to Web3, only tech guys, not only, but the majority is tech guys. And UX and the UI are still very hard. So we would like to make mass adoption. And good things is 60%, 70% of a human being living in Asia. Mm. So my mission is to make the mass adoption. And the fastest way is to work with the Sony, work with Samsung, work with other big companies. Do you consider yourself a geek? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it depends, right? It depends on the criteria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm more like entrepreneur rather than, you know, techie, techie guy. Who are you? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> um, my name is Sota Watanabe, founder of Asta and CEO at Starter Lab. Um, I'm from Japan and I'm 28 right now. Um, I started um, Web3 career back in 2014 when I was a college student. And when I did Wired, Wired is the tech magazine. Um, it was the blockchain. Uh, it's, it's, it was all about blockchain. And I read it. And I realized that this, is the, this can be the technology which sends the wall. So I decided to visit Silicon Valley uh, back in 2015 to understand tech more. And at the time, I wanted to work on AI or Web3. The reason is um, I have been to uh, a lot of the countries by myself alone, like India, China, uh, Russia, uh, US when I was a college student and I saw a lot of the social issue such as poverty, you know, discrimination, um, um, global warming and so on. And I wanted to contribute to the society through my knowledge, my technology and so on. And being a, being a Japanese is kind of lucky because I didn't choose, right? I didn't choose to be Japanese, but I'm, I'm born as a Japanese, which is pretty lucky because uh, Japan is kind of developed country. And I have been never asked the money when I was in Japan. But when I go to India, um, a lot of the children comes to me and they said, give me money. I could not understand, so I ignore. But uh, my Indian friend translated Hindi to English and he said, they are asking money. So I was kind of shocked mm. to understand the world as it is. So I, was, I wanted to contribute, but I did not know how. So I decided to, to work at a non-profit non organization in Japan. But I also realized that uh, without, without leveraging tech, without capital, it is very hard to make an impact. And then I worked at the SoftBank um, Robotics. 
in I was researching robots, but um, AI and the robots are already very mature industry. It's not mature in the long run, but uh, you know, compared to blockchain and Web3, it was already mature. Mm. So I decided to work on Web3 because Bitcoin was invented in 2008. So I joined the blockchain space back in 2014. So there, there was only seven years history in mm. this domain, but this can be big. So I joined the Web3 space and started our product when I was a researcher at the University of Tokyo. You said you went to a few countries, right? You said yeah. you went to India, China, Russia, Russia, and the US. You went to Russia to teach English? Yeah. Why? I wanted to see the world by, my, by myself. Uh, general Japanese people just stay in Japan. Mm. They cannot speak English first. <laughs> and they are in Japan because they can stay in Japan with family, with happy life. They don't need to go outside. And that's why a lot of people see Japan as the wall. Right? In Japan, right? A yeah, lot of in, people. in Japan. It's the same as Switzerland. Is it? It's the same. Because it's really? like a bubble where everything works, right? Uh -huh. Actually, Singapore, probably similar. Yeah, too. similar. Why? Because I moved to Asia when I was 21. Hong, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Singapore. Oh, really? Nice. And when I went back to Switzerland, just for a while. Yeah. Because then I was like, I can never come back to Switzerland in my 20s because it's too slow, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People ask me there, why would you leave Switzerland? Like my yeah. friends from universities, smart people, right? right. Educated people. Right. Why would you leave? And it's kind of like, it makes sense because you can have great jobs, great salaries and everything, right? Yeah. So I think it's very similar to yeah. what you experienced. But yeah. yet you said, hey, I want to go and see the world. Mm. Yeah, I think that one of the most important things for young people is to find a passion and a mission and the reason why they live. Um, without that, I think it is very hard to be successful as an entrepreneur because especially in the crypto and the Web3 space, everybody getting rich very fast, <laughs> right? So it's in the, in the, well, everybody getting poor also very fast. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time, yes. And, let's, be, let's be honest, there is two sides <laughs> to the equation. <laughs> and a lot of the people just misunderstood the reason why they can be rich or why they can be poor. Everybody is talking about other people, but uh, the truth is, it's because of your choice. So it is really important to have really strong reason to do a business or to make a product. Mm. Some people, some people really would like to realize the world of the decentralized society, well, which is great. But uh, some people like me, would like to make the mass adoption. I would like to make the world where ordinary people are using Web3 as uh, just like internet. And my another motivation is Japan. I'm from Japan. So I, I feel that a lot of the people, a lot of the Japanese company, the government, uh, people expect us to be a global product. Mm. By by reading the Asia or by reading the wall, I would like to encourage other young people to do the same. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. What's your message to entrepreneurs mm -hmm. who want to start a business mm -hmm. in crypto or not necessarily in crypto, mm -hmm. just to make money or to make a lot of money? Because <laughs> this happens yeah. a lot, right? Yeah. Um, one of the advice I can give is I'm not successful yet, but uh, one of the advice is the uh, focus on the execution and don't fuck up the culture. So two things. Um, the first thing is the a lot of the people just overestimate the impact of trends. So right now, you know, you say anybody to account abstraction or maybe real, real world assets. These kind of the things are trends. So a lot of the people just work on this to gain short-term benefit. But um, mm. so true. financial incentive because this is the next wave. So yeah. I'll jump on it, right? Not because yeah. I'm trying to solve an issue and which happens to 
have its kind of turn yeah, yeah. on the on the trend. Yeah. Uh, what I'm saying is basically uh, the daily execution is much more important than rather than you know seeing the trend, doing the trendy stuff, because the making great product takes time. So we have been developing for four years right now, and um, we improved every day, and we see execution as the most important factor to be successful. So. Sometimes it is it might be really difficult to get attention from the market because we are new, we are doing the trendy stuff. But uh, sometimes it was difficult to get uh, attention. But uh, we de- we really believe the power of the execution and the culture is the 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 also most important things because the stronger the culture is, the faster we can achieve the goal. And culture is uh, kind of simply the way the the company share um, when when we do you know something with passion. Mm-hmm. So the stronger culture is, the more leadership the team has. So we can achieve the goal faster. So culture and execution. You said I'm not successful yet. Yeah. Right. You said you're 28 years old. You got all titles and accolades in the world already before 30. Mm-hmm. But you said you're not successful yet, right? And I think even Astar is worth probably today more than 1 billion. Um, Fully diluted variation is 1.5 or 1.6 billion. So, yeah. and it's probably growing much higher, right? Yeah. In this cycle and in the future. So what's your definition of success? If you say you're not successful yet. Mm, I would say top 10. Or top five, at least. Mm. And so it's I, still a very yeah. number driven approach to success. This is one definition. <clears throat> and uh, another definition is potentially the impact we are bringing. Right now, the, our impact is only limited in the Web3 domain, right? But uh, Web3 is, aggressively speaking, just one of the industry. There are a lot of industry, like, Semiconductor, um, you know, maybe headphone, the environment, food, a lot. And Web3 is small industry. So this is my first um, step to be successful in the Web3 domain. But I also really interested in, um, let's say, nuclear fusion or maybe AI and uh, others. By, by combining a lot of the industry, we can make the huge impacts to change the world. This mm-hmm. is what I would like to do. But that in the long term, maybe 20 years, 30 years, and so on. You yeah, say- I, can, I can talk about the Wave 3, but uh, you know, <laughs> I'm not talking about the Wave 3 today. <laughs> we, we, we will, we will a oh, bit. We will. Don't worry. Okay. No, no, there is a Wave 3 part because <laughs> that's what people are here for. But I love to like talk about a lot of other things because at the end of the day, you have a lot of knowledge. Mm. that is Web3, but also not Web3 related, right? Mm-hmm. And so I, I want people to really see the full picture. I mean, mm-hmm. in whatever time we have, which is not much. You said I'm happy. I've always been happy. I'm born happy. Mm-hmm. Why? How can you say I'm happy, right? Because it, it mm-hmm. sounds kind of trivial. Yeah. But obviously it's a feeling in the morning when you wake up, but why and more generally i would say how can youngsters in their 20s and 30 mm-hmm. 30s become the happiest version of themselves mm. i think different people feel differently when it comes to happiness um for me i'm running a company and uh, we are making products every day probably uh, seven days in a week uh, i'm intentionally taking a day off on Saturday, but uh, I will say seven days. Um, you manage to take a whole day off every Saturday. Yeah. Do you manage to not answer to emails or to messages? Uh, I'm messaging. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I'm intentionally doing PlayStation 5 right now okay. to intentionally forget the change Yeah. my mind. Yeah. And the, when it comes to happiness, um, as I said, probably I have been working very hard. So the job is really hard. Work is really hard. 
probably 98% are really hard, but only 2% that makes the huge impacts in the world.、Mm. So let's say,、uh, thanks to Astar and our small success, the Japanese regulation has been changed twice. So I feel that we are bringing the value to, to, the, to Japan. Can you give us an example of how the Japanese regulation has、yeah. changed thanks to Astar and yourself? Yeah.、Um, so let's say we came to Singapore three years ago because of the, the tax on unrealized gain.、Mm. So it was not possible.、Um, To issue the token in Japan. So let's say if Asta was,、um, we issued a token in Japan, our variation is let's say $1 billion to make, it, to make it easy. And then foundation, our company own let's say 50% to make it easy, right?、Mm-hmm. Um, 50% is $500 million、mm-hmm. US dollar. And then without selling the token, just having token, By having token, the 30% will be taxed at the end of the year. Even if you don't sell, right? You、yeah. say unrealized gain. Okay, yeah. So it we, really makes sense. Yeah, if we issue token today in the 1 billion, we own 50%. Next year, I have to pay 300 million US dollar、mm. in Japanese yen. I cannot use token as a tax. So I, have to, I had to sell, right? The 30%, which is not possible, feasible.、Mm. So we moved to Singapore, and the way we moved to Singapore, Our team was small. But right now, we have、uh, more than 70 people across the globe from 19 different countries. And our variation exceeded 1.5 billion. And then the Japanese government realized that if we make Asta in Japan, we had to pay 300 million, which is not possible.、Mm. They realized. And then from the last year, they changed the law, tax law. And now there is no tax on crypto. The crypto issued by、uh, by own company. There is no tax. And from this year, there is no tax on unrealized gain for a company.、Mm. So we are constantly changing the Japanese law and tax, which is, I think, very good when it comes to adoption. <clears throat> Absolutely. But I, I'm not satisfied because I have been doing this in Japan. But、uh, only Japan. So I would like to do it in Asia and in the world. So this is my next step. So your next step is to have an impact on other regulations from other countries? Not, not only regulation, but also、uh, impact of the products.、Mm. Yeah. You grew up in Japan, right? Yeah, I grew up in Japan.、So、I'm, I'm a typical Japanese. Yeah. So yeah. what's the most important value that you learned from the Japanese culture? That you will keep with you forever?、Mm, good question. I think harmony. 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 Yeah.、Um, I think Japanese people d o e s not believe strong religion or strong opinion. We respect others, generally speaking, right?、Mm-hmm. So let's say、um, the Japan has a lot of the gods. <laughs>、mm-hmm. Yeah, we believe that there is a god. General Japanese. General Japanese believe that there is a god in a table, maybe, in a, in a sky, in a woods, in a river, everywhere. There are a lot of the gods, you know, more than thousands probably.、Mm-hmm. So we accept the diversity. So we respect、uh, American people. We respect the way how Chinese people think. We respect how European people think. So, probably the harmony is the, one of the strengths we have. Yeah. And another one is the maybe politeness、um, and、uh, probably、uh, the power of detail.、Mm, right? Very the, important、yeah. to build things. Yeah, the, there is a Japanese quotes, the words, there is the God in detail.、Mm. So I think generally we are good at making something very small and we really care about detail. 
So in yeah. Japan, instead of saying the devil is in the detail, you would say the God is in the detail, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so I understand the kind of very positive aspect that yeah. growing up in Japan had in your life, but there is also mm -hmm. often some limiting factors, right? Yep. You, you, you move to the US, you work uh, there a bit for a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is the a year right? Yeah. Is there something there that you realize? Oh man, my view. So there is so many great things about Japan, but there is also many limiting factors on what's possible. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. And when you go to the US, maybe you realize, oh man, now I see what's possible. Like mm -hmm. sky is the limit. Mm -hmm. So so what? What what is something that you think in Japan is very limiting for? Entrepreneurs who want to, you know, who have a great, uh -huh. like a huge vision and want to take, take over the world. Yeah. Um, I have been traveling a lot. So even this year I was in the uh, US, Japan, uh, Korea, uh, Singapore, in Dubai within uh, 1.5 months or two months. Mm -hmm. So I think. I have been I have been seeing a lot of the thing in the right now the problem is a lot of the Japanese people are seeing inside of the country, not outside. And I would say Asian. There are very few successful products in the company from Asia. So let's say even crypto and web three, if we see the ranking. Probably uh, only you know five, six, or seven projects in top one hundred from Asia. So <clears throat> we have a, a population, and uh, we have a, a lot of the buying power from Korea, China, Japan, and so on. But uh, we do not have very strong projects from Asia. So this can be the problem. Do you think it's more, it's because the, the, the culture is more risk averse? Yeah, I think so. And uh, the Asia is very fragmented, right? The Koreans culture is different from Japan, mm. but similar. But uh, Malaysia is different from Indonesia. Mm. So a lot of the people see inside of the country, not outside mm. still. So if we see Asia as the one market, probably we can see a lot of the great products or great entrepreneurs. But right now, people are seeing Japan as Japan. Mm -hmm. Or Singapore as Singapore. Absolutely. But Singapore is not probably the exception. But uh, Malaysia as Malaysia, Indonesia as Indonesia, right? But US is such a big market. China is such a big market. Mm -hmm. So if they see US as the market, which is enough. It's enough at least to, get, to gain enough scale to yeah. build something of importance, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. What do you think is a potential solution to this problem in Asia? Um, so basically, uh, I'm founder of Asta, right? And also CEO at Starter Lab. The Starter Lab is the company and Asta is the network. Mm. And our strategy for Starter Lab is to vertically integrated products. So I see a Web3 industry like a layers, the blockchain layer, node layer, index layer, wallet layer, and application layer. Right now, a lot of the people are seeing industry horizontally. So let's say, a lot of the people say, Solana is faster than Ethereum. Or maybe um, this app is better than this app. But the problem is, because there are a lot of the layers, the UI and the UX are fragmented. So what happened if we could provide vertically integrated service? If we own blockchain, node, index, wallet app by ourselves, probably we can uh, adjust the user experience. Right now, when we, when we make application, I have to optimize this application for blockchain. Let's say Ethereum or let's say Asta. Mm. But if we own from bottom to top, we can customize bottom stack based on what we would like to do at the application layer. 
then probably this can be the game changer and we can make very scalable web to like use case. This is what we would like to do. And when it comes to blockchain layer, uh, we have, we are working on Astar. Uh, Astar is layer one and also Astar ZK EVM, Ethereum layer two will be de deployed. And we are also working with Sony right now to make a public blockchain. So this can be one of the biggest projects. And we have a started web cloud, web three cloud. So we are, we, we are going to deploy node service and indexing service. And after that, we are going to create wallets and app. So it probably takes three or five years, but, um, we are on the right track to deliver the mass adoption. Probably I'm not answering your question. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, there's very, very like a lot of different ways this yeah. conversation can go and like. Definitely one of them is obviously what you're doing at Astar. And from what I understand that you're talking about, it's you are kind of working towards a cross-chain yes. world, right? Mm -hmm. Because you can't be fragmented between like, okay, Solana, Ethereum, yep. Yep. Polkadot. Yep. And so otherwise we'll never, we'll never able to build anything that the normal people. Yep use and don't know that yep. there is blockchain underlying, right? Yep. yep. The only way this can happen is if there is an integration between the different blockchains yep. and, uh, and, um, and we focus more then on the, on the application layer and a better user experience, yeah, which yeah, today yeah. is really bad, right? Yeah. Um, in terms of the technical stuff in the Web3 narrative, it is really difficult for Asta to compete with, let's say, Arbitrum or maybe Optimism and so on, maybe Srana. Mm -hmm. If we compete with them in a DeFi area, probably it is very difficult because it, it, we ha they have uh, networking effects. The more liquidity, better for the network, right? And they have a, you know, 3 billion or maybe 4 billion, the billions. Mm -hmm. It is really hard for us to compete with, with them from scratch. Mm -hmm. So we needed to find a sweet spot, sweet spot which we can win. Mm. And this is going to be um, probably, um, you know, mass adoption area. So our target is not DeFi user, not NFT user. This, they can be a target, but they are not core target, main target. Our main target is the ordinary people mm. the, who are walking outside right now. The, this population is much more than this, the first one. And the, how we deliver blockchain and Web3 body to them is to work with really big companies. This is the fastest way hmm. to make mass adoption, I believe. So that's why we have been working with a lot of the enter, you know, enterprises, a lot of the company which has touch points. And we are also making our touch point too. You said that your niche then is normal people, right? Such as... Yeah. Your mother. Yeah, yeah. What is Astar mm -hmm. if you have to explain it to your mother? Probably I'm not answering your question, but the, my mother does not need to understand Astar when they use internet, sorry, uh, when they use Astar. So let's say a lot of the people are using internet today, right? Mm -hmm. But they don't know TCP IP. Mm. They don't know HTTP at all, <laughs> literally at all, but they are using internet. So similarly, a lot of the people are going to use Asta. That's why our token economics works, but they don't need to understand Asta mm. and how it works, the brands or, you know, tech stack and so on, but they are using, this is what I would like to make. But, um, if I explain Asta to my mother, um, probably the, the core underlying technology of the future internet. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. What are the few key things that a crypto founder mm -hmm. needs to get right yep. in order to launch and operate a successful crypto network? Cause there's so many mm. flavors out there, right? And yeah. most of them will not be successful and most of them will not reach the scale that you reached. Mm. I have been meeting a lot of the Web3 entrepreneurs, the, from the old one and the young one. 
um, and probably one of the best entrepreneurs I have ever met is Sandeep, mm -hmm. the founder of Polygon. He is a very nice guy, and I was I was in Dubai to meet him. Um, what I like about him is the balance between the aggressiveness and humbleness. I also has similar mindset. Sometime to win, founder needed to be very aggressive. But if they became extreme, they will be arrested. <laughs> Or maybe they will fail. And we see a lot of the bad example, right? We've seen it uh, two years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have been seeing bad example in the past years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Absolutely. we should learn from them. And <laughs> the humbleness, and that's why humbleness is needed. Because even though how, many, how much they are making money, we are still small. Web3 is still a small industry when we compare Web3 to internet, Web3 to foods, Web3 to housing, and so on. So we are still small. So we have to see us as one of the entrepreneurs in the world. If we see them as one of the Web3 entrepreneurs, they can be big. But if we see them as one of the entrepreneurs, we are still small. Mm. So light mindset so founder cockiness yeah is a big red flag yeah and potentially or let's say it's more likely that the pro project even if it's kind of very successful now it looks like it it's more likely to fail yeah i think so and it's very easy to spot founder cockiness because uh because usually the cocky founders they have the biggest mouth right yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that's why the balance but maybe on their to their defense, right? Mm -hmm. Because crypto is a, crypto is essentially every crypto project is an echo chamber mm -hmm. because there is a token linked to it. Yep. And therefore people's money net worth is tied to the token. Yep. So do you have this, it's in all, every project almost becomes a religion, right? Yep. So you're, you're much more likely to have people attacking other projects. Yeah. And so, I mean, obviously the, the, the role of the founder would be kind of to ignore that and keep building, but it's probably easier said than done, right? Mm. Yeah. What, what, what do you do if someone attacks Astar? It is okay. The, one of the strengths of the Japanese is just like I said, <laughs> uh, I respect. Yeah. I, respect yeah, I respect their opinion. But I disagree sometimes. Mm. But I respect the opinion. Now the feedback is just a gift. Right? If they say something, we have a room to improve. That's which a, great, is a good thing. That's an amazing way to look at that. And uh, yeah, actually, the other day we because we released trailers for this episode, kind of Hollywood-like trailers. Yep. yep. And uh, we ha we had a lot of great feedbacks on those. And then the other day we released the uh, the one from Wintermute. Mm. And the ho internally we checked with the team and it's oh it's amazing. The co-founder also loved it. And yep. then the other co-founder, I mean, the founder, and he just posted on, Insta uh, on Instagram, on Twitter, and Twitter. said something like, hey, some people will need uh, some time to recover from that mm -hmm. because it's too intense, right? In terms mm -hmm. of like, you know, it's a very kind of like YouTube way or Instagram yeah. way of doing like trailers yeah. because our generation, we need to keep people enter entertained. So you have zoom in, zoom out, things right, happening, right? right? And so, and then obviously if you have someone who is of a certain influence saying that, yep. Yep. Then you have all the people in the comments starting to yeah. attack, right? Yeah. And then I showed that to uh, the guy who does our trailer, who I think makes an amazing job, right? And I'm not the only one thinking that. But I was thinking the same way. Mm. Feedback is a gift, but I just said yeah. nothing. Yeah. And I could see that he was really kind of, oh man, like this is really yeah. bad. And I, for me, I was just thinking, oh no, man, like every feedback is a good yeah, feedback. Yeah. Even if it's a terrible feedback, yeah. you don't necessarily have to acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. But take it into account and realize yep. there's other people with other opinions and maybe it can help you kind of like make this last, you know, one or two percent difference yeah. that's going to be even better at the yeah. end, right? Yeah, 100 percent. I got uh, a lot of uh, attacks, especially when the star price goes by, goes down. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you laugh about that. Because like... <laughs> but, uh, the interesting thing of crypto is if price goes up... Your project the... is the best project in yeah. the world, right? <laughs> if the price goes person. down... The, yeah, the same person changed their mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. 
which this this is a very interesting one because it leads us to the community, right? Yeah. And in crypto, there is a big focus on the community. Everybody yeah. talks about community, 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 yeah. which is definitely very important and which you've been able to do really well, both with your personal brand, but also for Astar, build yeah. a, a community of almost cult-like community, yeah. like very yeah. sticky, engaged users. But let's kind of like play a bit of the devil's advocate and be very frank and honest about this word community in crypto. Mm -hmm. It's a community when price goes up. But when price goes down, you start to realize that the community is not as strong as you might think. Yeah. And it's more the money that people make that's kind of tying them up together rather than, you know, the, the kind of meme, I'm in it for mm. the tech. Mm. What do you think about that? How much do you think the majority of the people are really there for the, the tech? Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. Versus... Hey man, my bags are going up. Therefore, I love everyone. You know, I'm a pe I'm a pudgy penguin. I love everyone. I'm a I'm an Astar holder. I love yeah. everyone. Like it's amazing. It's the best project in the world. But there will be like there is every three to four years. There will be a top. Yeah. And then there will be a mega correction. Yep. And there will be people who are very angry. People who are losing everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And people who, again, attack. Yeah, yeah. Right. And attack you. We had the 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 the. the founder of Request Network also like went into the billions. Yeah. And then down 98, 99%. Mm, really? and, and he said, he said it destroyed him. Yeah. Because he said, I realized that in the Discord, yeah. the community that I thought we were building yeah. was just there for the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. And it, it's true. A lot of the people join the community because of the money they can make. But uh, at the same time, the everything is opportunity. The price goes down, price goes up. This is, you know, it's not only crypto, but also stock, right? The everything goes up and it goes down. There are trends, and we can find the real friends when the price goes down. The one lesson I learned during the crypto winter is the 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 core people who are passionate about tech. Who are passionate about the future of the Web3 and the vision of the Astar survive, remain in a hard time. And we have to treat them as the number one customer. Mm. This is the essence I learned. And the winter market, and when price goes up, goes down, this is the good opportunity to find the one. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the one of the things, one of the reasons why Asta culture and our team is potentially stronger than others, because we hire the people based on the mindset and the culture fitness. And we hire the people because they can work even harder when market goes down. We don't hire people who are really passionate about money, you know, short-term trends, and so on. The light, we need people who has the right mindset over skill and over capability. What's the key to building a strong community for a crypto network? The first thing is the leadership. A lot of the crypto people and the crypto entrepreneurs consider leadership in a different way. Um, you know, the decentralization is the beauty of the Web3 and the power of the community. But uh, many people think trading themselves uh, themself out is kind of decentralization, just like Satoshi, mm. which is Satoshi is good, but um, we cannot remake Satoshi, right? And instead, we should, the leader should increase other leaders to be more decentralized, making himself, himself fades out. So one to zero is not a decentralization. Increasing number of the leader one to one hundred, one to thousands leaders means decentralization for me. So I'm still taking a uh, leadership in the Asta community, I think. But at the same time, I'm, I'm you know, allocating my resource, my knowledge, uh, my job scope to other leaders. And then right now, other leaders are taking more responsibility. And we are increasing the number of the leaders in a community and in a company. So this is the way. And so for that, obviously, you need to put yourself 
in front, right? And you need to, yeah. I mean, you basically need to, every, each of these projects, they need to have almost a cult-like leader, right? Yeah. It's like a religion and then people are, are, are kind of admiring the leader. Yeah. And it's something you've done really well, right? Yeah, I think so. And it all comes down to personal brand, which obviously can be crypto very important, but it's actually the case in every business today. Yes. Every, I think it's Balaji who said every company is a media company, right? Yeah. And it starts with the leader and his pers or his or her personal brand. Yeah. So how important is personal brand to you? Uh, for me? I'd say um, for you and for other people who want to build businesses. I think, generally, I think the, if we see a market, the investors, I mean, when it comes to stock market, the investors and uh, people invest in dream, hmm. right? Majority of the people does not see a profit and loss. Majority of the people does not see a, a company's financial statements. Majority of the people buy dream. That's why Elon Musk is such a big man. Absolutely. <laughs> He's very nice to make the narrative and make dream people believe in, right? And in, in this case, I think uh, taking the leadership in the community and clearly state what I would like to do is very important in my personal life too. And Jack Ma, the founder of Alibaba, said the money follows people and people should follow their dreams. So I'm following dream and money follows. And what I would like to do is I, to be honest, I don't really care about my personal money. I'm single. If I'm married and if I have a kid, maybe different, but mm -hmm. I'm single <laughs> right now. <laughs> so I don't really care about my personal money right now, but probably a uh, if I became 30 or if I became 40 or 50, probably what I can accomplish or what I would like to do can be really big. Like, you know, go to the space or nuclear fusion or maybe, uh, you know, AI data center or mm -hmm. something, right? Mm -hmm. It takes billions. Mm -hmm. At the time, probably even though how much I have, how successful I am, probably I'm not going to have 30 million US dollar in my pocket. And then it is more important to be trusted by market, trusted by investors. And they can invest in me without due diligence because they trust me in reputation. Which means that for you, having a million followers mm -hmm. is much more important than having a million dollars in your bank account. Yeah, 100%. Like influence. Mm -hmm eats money for breakfast, right? Yeah. Ish. Ish. Well, I, I, I'm really like a minimalist. I like Uniqlo, as you can see. <laughs> and my like house good, is just a bed. Like a good Japanese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, this is Uniqlo too. Oh, nice. It's so good. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, Uniqlo is so good. I just spend my days in Zara and Uniqlo and just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I only have Uniqlo on no space. Yeah. And when I go and to... And only black. Yeah, black. All black. <laughs> Because I, I don't need to think about my clothes. And when you come to my house, for, uh, you can only see sofa and bed and uh, desk. Sofa, bed, desk. That's Nothing it. against the wall? <laughs> uh, I have uh, some pictures. The, one of my hobbit, habit is to get local painting mm. of each country. So when I go to Dubai, I'm going to a local market and buy painting. Local, local painter painted. Yeah. And I have Dubai, Malaysia, and Vietnam, and uh, yeah, in Japan right now. So you're I'm correcting right now. You're a minimalist, but the the problem is you have to get a bigger place soon because the more countries you visit, the more yeah. space you need to get. Yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Or the smaller the pictures. <laughs> Even though, but but you know, if you ask me to move to another house, I can do it today. Okay. Because I'm minimalist. So you're that kind of guy. I'm the same. Like you basically live your life with a suitcase, right? Yeah, you yeah, could yeah. put everything in a suitcase yeah. and just move. Yeah. What do you do with your money? Um, 
No, I don't know. My bank account, the money in my bank account is just increasing. That, that's it. And somehow I started a donation. Mm -hmm. So let's say we started our project from the University of Tokyo. Um, and we graduated from a um, kind of program. And then now I, it's going to be announced by the end of this month, but uh, I donated roughly 100K or something to University of Tokyo along with Toyota and other companies. Mm -hmm. Then um, a lot of the young people join the program and they consider a new architecture of the blockchain or they can be the Web3 entrepreneurs and so on. So yeah, uh, this kind of the stuff. And I'm buying, I'm buying Bitcoin, that's it. <laughs> and that's Obviously. That. Yeah, right? <laughs> Obviously. You position Astar as Japan's go-to blockchain platform. Right now, yes. Why did you choose a more regional approach mm -hmm. to blockchain building when one of the key strengths of the blockchain is that it's borderless? That is a really good question. Um, I'm like Web3 entrepreneur, more like philosophist. So when it comes to Astar, we intentionally started from Japan and we are making layer one and layer two. And if we see only tech, probably it is really hard for us to work, you know, compete with Polygon, compete with uh, Optimism, Arbitrum, and so on. One of the strengths is geological presence. Um, we really have strong presence in Japan right now, in Korea, in Asia potentially, and then in the long run, no one, no one talk about Japan. It's kind of startup strategy. So first of all, what we have to do is to become number one in a niche small market, and then expand horizonally. Japan, then Korea, then Asia, then probably the global. <clears throat> so this is the light strategy and approach, even though blockchain is global. Which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, obviously ask the question, but I yeah. kind of, I mean, I knew it's exactly what every startup or project should do, yeah. right? Even we talked in the, in the podcast with James Hu and he said that one of the things he really likes about, I mean, he loves about Astar, but like the, one of the things he's looking for in these uh, different blockchain projects is which one are solving a specific problem in a specific yeah. place. He talked yeah. about Turkey and he talked about Astar, obviously in Japan. And uh, what's really interesting is it kind of goes against, I mean, it's very logical. Yeah. Every company should start with a product in a niche, right? Yeah. And a specific target customer, a specific country. Does this mean, but, but yet you, you, you have your mission, which is yeah. web three, four billions, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you believe in Silicon Valley think big, right? And mm -hmm. blitz scaling and, you know, we should like go as quickly as possible and kind of, I mean, you know, the, the Uber, Uber model yeah, or yeah. Airbnb, which is, I just go out there. I spend a lot of money and just try to acquire market shares at yeah. all cost and yeah. it, which is the opposite of what you've been doing, right? Yeah. Um, but I think Web3 is more like more decentralized when it comes to uh, market engineers, people and so on. I think 70% of the Web3 plan are living outside of the US or something. And uh, a lot of the trading volume still in Asia, like Korea. So we have geological strengths, but at the same time, Web3 is not sorry, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's all about, it's, it's not all about the some, somehow Web3 is competition because there are so many people, so many entrepreneurs, so many similar projects. So I think the kind of breadth scaling and a more startup mindset is also needed. But at the same time, the difference between blockchain and Web2 product is the security and also how to develop the products. 
So in terms of the blockchain, once we deployed, once we deploy the products, mm -hmm. generally we cannot mm -hmm. change the smart contract because this is the beauty of the blockchain. But in the web two, just deploy and let's see how it works, right? Get it done is better than perfect. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the blockchain, we needed to deploy the perfect project. Mm -hmm. Without perfect codes or without bugs, people can, you know, people cannot use it. So this is a huge difference. But uh, yeah, uh, winning in a niche market and a go global is kind of strategy. And right now, everybody is talking about Asta and Japan. Mm -hmm. When when people come to Asta, they consider Japan and vice versa. But in the long run, so let's say in 10 years, if we people see Asta, they don't think about Japan. And I have been making this strategy so we will see. If you have to say, what's the one thing that Astar is doing better than his competitors? Uh huh. Um, the one thing is the clear strategy. I don't see uh, any geological chain when it comes to competition. Mm. So a lot of the people are um, fighting and competing in a uh, Web3 tech domain, which is good. And we also need to compete with them in some way. But when it comes to competition and the idea of the mass adoption, still they are in a Web3, Web3 world. And I'm also seeing Web1 and Web2 all outside of the Web3 to make Web3 ecosystem bigger. So my market is very different from other Web2 founders market mm. the market web3 founder consider so the this can be uh the difference of the strategy and this can be a strength of a star and i believe that web3 ecosystem can be much bigger by connecting web3 to web2 mm. so not only you're going local yeah. starting local and then growing yeah. but also you're going for different target customer, which is yeah. Web2 and normal yeah. people who don't really understand and don't really care about Web3. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas and, uh, the other blockchains, they compete on this Web3, very techie user base. Yeah, which is good. And we should be techie. And we are investing a lot of the money, a lot of people to develop innovative products. So we are also competing in a tech domain. But uh, when it comes to tech domain, other competitors are also very strong. Mm. So we need to find other strengths. And this can be, you know, geological strengths. This can be, uh, you know, connecting to Web2 and Web3. And I think there are a lot of the people who can understand the Web3 idea and uh, philosophy in a Web3 domain. But there are very few people who can understand both Web2 and Web3. The business scheme and how they behave and the speed is really different. Mm. Yeah, the way how we work with Sony is really different from the way I work with Web3 company. Yeah. And the, we are also speaking with the government, talking with the government and understanding their mechanism. This is way different from others, we've, we've, way different from other Web3 you know, companies and the things. So understanding both is kind of very tough. But this can be our strengths. You decided yeah. to build Astar on Polkadot. Yeah, yeah. Right? Astar is the largest chain in the Polkadot yeah, ecosystem. Right now. Why did you choose to build on Polkadot? Uh, this is also a good question. Um, probably, as I said, I'm more like Web3 entrepreneur who is good at making strategy. Um, so when, when I started uh, the Web3 project, Ethereum was already big. It, uh, there are a lot of great project, a lot of the great layer twos and so on. So it was really hard for me to compete mm -hmm. in the uh, Web3, uh, sorry, Ethereum ecosystem. So my, our idea was start from Polkadot. And I really like founders of the Polkadot. And I believe the mission of the Polkadot founders and at that time, Polkadot ecosystem was uh, smaller than Ethereum. 
in when I started a project, there was no Solana and there was no Avalanche and so mm -hmm. on. And <clears throat> Polkadot was not started yet. So that's why we started from Polkadot and Polkadot grow as that grows. And then we became the largest project in a Polkadot ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And then we got, we're going to deploy Ethereum layer too. So the bet is probably you would have said, oh, it, Ethereum would have been a good match, right? But yeah. it's too difficult to differentiate yourself because there's too many yeah. projects. Therefore, yeah. what's one of the next big chains yeah. that I think is going to be big and that is still not big today? Ah, Polkadot. Yeah. And let us become one. Yeah. I mean, now you are the one. Yeah. The largest chain, one of the largest chains on the Polkadot ecosystem. So yeah. people know about us. Yeah. And then expand Scale. to other to other chains yeah. from there yeah that's a plan mm -hmm. um the as an entrepreneur the most important things is to make the future and wait in times comes this is important a lot of the entrepreneur just follow trends then they will lose and let's say ai um ai was a big trend last year and then a lot of the people pivoted from mm -hmm. crypto to ai or you know you know a lot of the place to ai everybody is talking <laughs> ai that's why they're going to lose, right? Yeah. The open AI was founded in 2014 or 2015-ish. And then they have been developing a lot. Mm. And now they're winning. Mm. So it takes time. Yeah. So they created a future and wait and time comes. It's going to be the same. So we have been working on Polkadot. Wait, time comes. And we became number one. And then Ethereum layer 2 is the hot topic. And we have been developing right now. And we're going to launch and we're going to onboard a lot of the mass people to Web3. Yeah. So, so James Wu, mm -hmm. the crypto billionaire and founder of uh, DFG. Yeah. He was on the podcast a few months ago, a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. I That's saw the that. reason why basically you're here, right? <laughs> and he thinks that you and Luca Nets are some of the best builders in the space. Mm -hmm. And you both are, I think Luca is 25. You're 28. Oh, wow. Yeah. So basically, you're super young. I mean, James is also young. He's 30, but he was like, yeah. you're younger than me. And they're <laughs> amazing, right? In crypto, there is no age or race discrimination. It's a very meritocratic system. Yeah. Why is crypto the absolute best place to build for hungry youngsters with a big vision? Um, that's a good question, but I have really clear answers because the industry is not mature yet. Mm. Uh, the reason why I chose Web3 back in 2014 or 15 is there was almost no history and everything is chaos. But let's say AI, a lot of the professors, a lot of the people there and their age is 50 or 60 or 70. And some people already passed away. So there is the hierarchy in the industry. But Web3, it's not yet. And if I was born, let's say, 30 years ago, I would work on internet. Mm. If I was born 20, 10 years earlier, I would work on iPhone, phone, mm. mobile. And Web3 was born in 2000. 14, uh, sorry, um, 2008. And probably the concept of the Web3 became popular in 2021 or 2022. Mm. Mm. So we just started. And we are here to be the first pioneer to make the history, make the industry. So this is the reason why hum, you know, aggressive entrepreneur and the young people should join us. So the next big thing I mean, obviously now it's crypto, but the next big thing is something that people don't talk, is not the cool thing, right? Yeah. Obviously. And a, a good way to identify the next big thing is look in the industry, how old people are. Yeah. Probably very helpful, right? Yeah, yeah. Very helpful. And another way is, which is what I've done when I was, I joined 2017, 18, after yep. the bubble crash, basically. Yep. 2018, I looked at who are the big smart brains. For me, it was, you know, Chamath, mm -hmm. uh, Naval Ravikant, yep. uh, Balaji. Yeah. And I was looking at who are these dudes who I've been kind of following for years, I think are amazing. 
often people don't agree with them and yeah. are leaving everything to just work full time in crypto. Yeah. There is a lot of projects being built right now in crypto. Yeah. There's a lot of crap. Yeah. There's also good projects. Yeah. What are the absolute best projects in crypto right now for you? For me? Yeah. Your favorite ones and why? It's not a, a probably a fun answer, but uh, I really like the people who I'm working with, who I have been working with, like, you know, Polygon, the Polkadot, and, you know, other layer two projects and so on. I, I really like people inside of the project rather than the project itself. What's special about, let's take Polygon, for example. Uh -huh. What's so special about Polygon, what they're building, and the people who are building it? I mean, uh, we talked about Sandy before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But why do you think Polygon is such a good project that has huge potential? Yeah. When it comes to technology, um, I think there will be a lot of the layer twos in coming years. And historically speaking, when we see a uh, history of the internet, history of the operating system, I think Polygon's approach is very, pretty correct. Um, rather than instead of making very one strong layer two, provide SDK to make layer twos. And then they can make aggregation layer and they can benefit from here. And this approach is very correct in terms of history. And this is kind of Android OS strategy, mm. right? Uh, Android, Google allow a lot of the companies such as Samsung or Sony to make Android smartphone. But they are making money through Android and uh, Google App Store and so on, so it, which is similar. But Arbitrum, and Arbitrum is taking another approach. Like it's, it's, it's like Apple approach. One strong Apple and then a lot of the layer three. Only a two. But I think so. So Polygon, you would say, is a platform, yeah, for others to build layer twos yeah. on the top, right? Yep. And so by doing that, they're kind of like diversifying the risk. I mean, yep. lowering the risk because yep. they're becoming the platform themselves. Yep. They don't have to make a specific choice. Yep. And, and, and the, also, it, yeah. it it probably, I mean, it can only become much bigger because platforms themselves yes. become much bigger. Uh, yes. than applications themselves, right? In yes. pretty much any industry. Yes. And uh, Polkadot is also taking the same approach, right? Polkadot allow other people to make layer one and connect. So it's kind of Android strategy. And the difference is making Android outside of the Ethereum or inside of the Ethereum. Mm. So I think this approach is correct. So outside of the Ethereum, we are working with Polkadot. Inside of the Ethereum, we are working with Polygon. Yeah, in terms of tech. And in terms of the people, uh, let's say I was in Dubai last, month, last week, and uh, Polygon's people are really humble. <laughs> uh, when I visit their office, you know, nothing shiny, <laughs> basically, in the office. And the office is not big. Potentially to save the fund or, you know, Potentially to be humble, but uh, I really like this kind of the mindset. That's, even, a, that's a pure mindset, entrepreneur mindset, which is, yeah. I mean, what it should be. Even yeah. if you make a lot of money, why would you overspend if it's not needed? Yeah. Because there will be tougher times, right? Yeah, Where yeah. you are happy to have the money that you didn't spend in a lot of yeah. bullshit, right? Yeah, and we have a, our company has very similar culture, and I'm still using the, a lot of the economy, Right, and my co-founder stay in my house when he comes to Singapore amazing. to save. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. In a in a room where there is just a bed, bed. but there's just a mattress on the floor. Yeah, mattress. No bed. Yeah, no bed. <laughs> no, he is sleeping no on a mattress. No bed frame. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He is sleeping on a mattress. We are. That's uh, amazing. Asta is 1.5 billion US dollar uh, network, but he is still sleeping on a mattress. <laughs> And uh, we had a company camp in Dubai and 11 people from, I think, five or six countries gathered at one place. And uh, Martin Hensken, he is the head of the foundation, book 
Airbnb for 11 people. And he said, I book the Airbnb and your room is here. And the bed is only one there. And you and your Shun, he is CEO, is going to sleep on the same bed. <laughs> he said to save fun. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we had a lot of the money, by the way. <laughs> but it's kind you know, of culture, right? It's, I think it's much more that also. The cult, it shows what the values are. Yeah. And probably, I mean, not only, hey, we don't waste money. Yeah. Fine. But also, it's much more fun. I mean, yeah. if it's a bunch of people in their 20s or in their 30s, or even, I would say, like, probably community is one of the things that make yeah. people happy, right? Yeah. I'm part of something, so I probably... I mean, I'm, I have kind of the same approach when I go on holidays with my friends. Mm. Oh, let's, t should we take a mega villa? Mm. I mean, some of my friends, they don't have the same approach, right? But yeah. like, should we take, and sometimes we have clashes, should we take a mega villa where we each have like a big room with like a big bed? Or, hey, look, for example, next month I'm going to Brazil. Yeah. And we're four people in the group mm -hmm. going into Brazil. And then what, what, what some of the guys, I mean, they're from Switzerland. It's kind of, oh man, uh, there's a, just two rooms with uh, single beds, right? Yeah. Or whatever, two double beds. And me, yeah. I'm like, who gives a fuck? Like, let's just do it. Like, just, yeah. it's cool. first, it's more fun. Yeah. Second, it's cheaper. Yeah, yeah. And third, like, it's just part of like, hey, it's more fun to to be with someone, right? Yeah, part of the culture. Completely. Yeah. Completely. I love this example. It's a really good one. People will love that. Yeah. People yeah, yeah. will love to hear that. Like, hey, look, we are not. I mean, it just shows all the right mindset yeah basically which in crypto is so rare because yeah again as you said people we make so much money so quickly that it's very easy to kind of lose i mean you kind of it's very easy to lose the how can i say that to to to, to track of what money represents right yeah hey yeah. like i can upgrade my lifestyle i can fly business class all the time. I can mm. take the best places. I can, you know, start. I was also kind of doing that three years ago. Yeah. At some point, you have to kind of learn like by making mistakes. Oh, look, I'm just going to take the most expensive hotel because probably if it's the most expensive, it's probably the best, right? And then you yeah. start to learn, I know actually it's more expensive just because of the brand. Yeah. And the brand makes it more expensive, but it's not necessarily the best price to, you know, quality ratio. Yeah. So amazing. Yeah, we would like to have light mindset and uh, we really think we are not successful from our bottom of, heart, bottom of heart. That's why we are doing this and ex executives lead by example and then Absolutely. other people and the community do the same. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, and that good thing is 11 executives, 11 people gathered, but no one complained. This is also good because we have a similar mindset, culture, and so on. And if you think about it, the, the happiest moments when you start a business is when you start the business, yep. right? This startup culture, how look, our, our office was like crap or it's still kind of crap, but it does the job and like you're kind of struggling. And yep. as long as you can keep this kind of culture, mm -hmm. it's kind of counterintuitive, but it's not, it's the struggle that makes you happy. Mm -hmm. And the... Uh, hey we can live simply and if we live simply by the way we almost have no risk right yep. because it's a classic um, freedom kind of concept which is yep. freedom is living under below your means yep. if you always live below your means you, you're free yep. right and you don't need that much money to live Yep. Right. Especially if you're single and you don't have a family yep. and you can just, hey, look, like if I have a bed or a mattress on the floor and uh, some, you know, to, to buy some food, like I'm, I'm free and therefore yep. I can work on my dream. Yep. And th that dream can take as long as possible to realize. And that's kind of the, 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 the mindset that every entrepreneur should kind of jump into business and start yep. up with. Right. Yep. And one of the, I'd say, for me, for you too, you started, how old were you when you started? 23 or something. Yeah, so yeah. I was the same when I started my first company. And at that age, as much as there's always this thing, like, should you start kind of right oh, after yeah. uni or should oh, you yeah. do a few years of experience, build your network and everything, yeah. right? And obviously building a network, having years of experience is an advantage on one side. 
yeah. because you don't start with nothing. Yeah. But being 21, two, three, starting from right after uni or from yeah. nothing is a huge advantage just on that side yeah. because you start very humble and you realize, oh man, with a thousand bucks a month, right. I can survive. And right. if I need five years to build something, right. It's fine, right? Yeah, whereas whereas if you start and you have a normal job, a good job, you get a better pay, you're going to have this lifestyle in, in, inflation, right? Yeah, yeah. Upgrade your lifestyle every time your pay goes up and the day you have to take the leap, yeah. it's going to be very difficult. Yeah. Um, one of the lucky things for me was to start started my business when I was 22 or 23, when I was a college student, when I was poor. And my... First salary at my company, I can decide the salary, right? But uh, my first salary is like 700, 800 US dollars per month or something to save company money. <laughs> How long did you keep that for? For our uh, company, we were, yeah. we were in London. Yeah, yeah. We we're paying ourselves 1,850 pounds yeah. per month yeah. net. So after tax. Yeah, yeah. And we're just like, and we're making good money. We're just like, I was like, right, you know, right, very right. Swiss or very Japanese mindset, right, right, kind right. of like, you keep all the money in there, you don't know something could happen, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And we yeah. don't need money to live anyway, right? Yeah. So how long did you keep that 7, 000, uh, 700 I think a dollar mo per uh, month? 1.5 year. Yeah, so, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> I uh, it. No, it's, it's so good. Because <laughs> yeah, you don't need more, right? And yeah. also you want to be with people who are like-minded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, at that time, I was managing my funds the company's funds, just like mine, my fund, my mm. personal fund. Mm. And then I also understand how difficult it is and how tough it is to make money and uh, how tough it is when the bank account, the money on the bank account is decreasing. You know, I was really stressful every month when, we, when I have to pay salary because no money comes in, the money comes out. So it was very really hard. That's why I understand how difficult to make money from customers and how important it is to keep me hungry, to work more. Mm. Yeah, that's why, you know, even though our star is 1.5 billion, uh, we are still very humble. <laughs> mm. Absolutely. And, yeah. and not only to make money from customers, but then to get paid. Right, right. Because right. you have all the employees. I mean, so you, you invoice your clients, but they yeah. don't pay directly. Most of, I mean, I'd say like, at least when you start a company, so mm -hmm. you use 30 days, 60 yeah, days, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you have like these cash flow problems. Yeah, yeah. Cash something flow. that I always try to explain to my friends who say, oh, I'm an employee, I'm not free, uh, my boss this, my boss that, my company. Yeah. I'm like, you don't imagine how lucky and privileged you are to have every 25th of the month right. a freaking salary. Right. that comes into your book and you don't understand that someone needs to kill themselves behind just yep. to be able to have this salary at that date because if it yeah. doesn't fall that date you're gonna be like what the fuck is happening with this yeah, company yeah. it's not a normal company yeah, right yeah. they don't see all the mechanics behind it which yeah. is you need to find clients then you need to do the work yep. and then it needs to work like it yep. needs to be delivered and yep. then you need to get paid which you're not necessarily paid directly yep. right and there is all and I've, it's an amazing exercise very young to see yep. Both sides. I'm an employee right. from my company, right. but I'm also the employer and I have this money to manage and fuck, man, is going down yeah. and it's not right. And, 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 and then you understand, ah, the more we're simple on the yeah, yeah, yeah. employee side, uh, the more it's going to be, the less it's going to be stressful for yeah, the employer yeah. side, yeah, right? Yeah. And the more you keep this culture longer, the more you have time to build your dream. Yeah, I have been very lucky because I have done a lot of I have done a lot of the things by my own. Let's say paying salary by myself, making invoice by myself, making company's logo by myself. So I can understand how hard it is and uh, how stressful it is. What's your key takeaway from today's conversation? <laughs> be humble and, and the be humble is the number one things and having the right mindset. And um, aim higher. I mean, achieve more with right mindset. Which would mean 
don't change your life habits, even things get yeah. better. And yep. instead of becoming more complacent, yep. aim higher and keep the same lifestyle. Yeah. And people should consider the reason why they are here. I mean, in the Web3 space or maybe why they live. Some people only want to make money. That's, that's okay for me. But uh, to be successful in the long run, we need a social reason to work harder. It can be, you know, on behalf of Japan, or it can be, uh, uh, I mean, it can be representing Japan or specific nation, or, you know, solving social problem, whatever. Yeah, having this kind of the social strong, the reasons is the key successful factor for an entrepreneur. Thank you so much for your time, man. That yeah, thank you very much. Yes, yeah, thank you very much for having me today. Awesome, thank you. Thank you.